There's been a trend in media of a particular kind of character that has started appearing more and more often. You got a mean swing. A character that would otherwise not be looked kind upon in society, but because they're fictional, we give them more leeway. What the hell do either of you two have to be so uncertain about? Your brand of zit cream? Which chair to sit in while I do everything? Jerks. Uh, it's not gambling if you absolutely know you're going to win. Someone you wouldn't ever want to be friends with and try to minimize your interactions with them as much as possible. They could be rude. Would you want a cookie? Hell out my face. Arrogant. I'm the best. Self-centered. As a specimen, yes, I'm intimidating. But for whatever reason, we still love them. Why? First, they're not real. You don't have to deal with them on a regular basis, and when you get annoyed, you can simply turn the movie off. As funny as it is to watch Barney Stinson fail to hit on women time and time again and just be a terrible person, it would be a nightmare to have to deal with him in real life. And you don't always have the luxury of just walking away from the interaction. With a fictional character, all you have to do is close the book or turn off the computer. Where are you out of your mind? Better security. Get in the fucking I was Second, they're entertaining. They could be funny. I don't think your sword will fit. <laughs> I get that a lot. Or they could cause intriguing drama. What seems to be the problem? Good grief. I'm so depressed. Just want everyone to love me, but I don't know how to make them do it. You can't force love, you blockhead. Basically, a jerky character is interesting to watch because most of the time, we try to avoid being a jerk ourselves. But experiencing what it could result in can be intriguing. Third. We, as the audience, empathize with the jerk. We don't necessarily condone their actions. In fact, the main point of the character could potentially be not to. But if they are a main character, it helps that the audience understands why they act the way they do and that it makes sense. Not justify it, but makes sense. No, Morty, your grandfather is indeed in very deep pain. That is why he must numb himself. Fourth and most importantly, their jerkiness is not without consequence. Most of the time, a character's arrogance, distrust, or self-centeredness is depicted as a character flaw and can oftentimes be the primary focus of their character arc. Their jerkiness may result in conflict or them failing, or it might affect their in-universe likability. The writers of these characters make sure that if this person would not be liked by the majority of people in the real world, that they should not be liked by the majority of people in their fictional one. The fact that I was right about them must be pretty hard to admit. Yeah, it is. You know why, Rick? Because when you're an asshole, it doesn't matter how right you are. Nobody wants to give you the satisfaction. Interesting note, the characters that usually fall into this archetype are more often than not male. That's not to say that there are absolutely zero jerky female characters. Could you leave the lumberjack alone? Jeremy? Forget this! Just compared to the guys, they are much more rare and much more tame. Comparatively. <laughs> so let's look at some examples of how these principles are applied to recognizable characters. Marlin the Clownfish from Finding Nemo. Marlin is untrusting, arrogant, and kind of bossy. He constantly feels the need to butt in to give his input for almost everything, has a lack of faith in his son Nemo's abilities. <gasps> Nemo, don't move! Don't move! You'll never get out of there yourself. But why does he work? Let's look at the principles we said before again. We're going to skip number one because all of these characters are fictional, so it applies to all of them. Is he entertaining? Most of the time, his jerkiness is played for laughs. Good. Would somebody please give me directions? Would somebody please give me directions? <laughs> I'm serious. Blah, blah, blah. Me, me, blah, 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 me, me, me. Thank you. So that's a clear yes. Do we empathize with him? The first scene of the movie is showing how he loses his wife and all of his children, save for one. I'm sure plenty of people would be as overprotective as he is after an experience like that. Does he suffer consequences? Most of the characters call him out on his flaws. In the pivotal moment that causes the main conflict of the movie, Marlin again gets overprotective of Nemo, telling him how he is incapable of doing things, and as a result, Nemo disobeys and is taken. The whole movie is about Marlin's suffering as a result of his behavior. How about another one? Bojack Horseman from Bojack Horseman. What have you been doing since the show's cancellation 18 years ago? That's a great question, Charlie. I, uh, uh, I... He is bitter, 
narcissistic, self-destructive, and just has a terrible temper. And although he seems to suffer from depression, instead of trying to improve himself and get out of it, he lets it get the better of him. He's someone who tries to take responsibility for his actions, but never takes the final few steps to improve, often falling back to his old tendencies. I just need someone to help me focus. Cigarettes. <sighs> no, tequila! Uh, I just need the right music. To do drugs to. But he's beloved by fans instead of unanimously hated. Let's look at the list again. Is he entertaining? His antics and consequences are one of the main points of comedy in the show. People watch the show for Bojack because Bojack is interesting to watch. Are you drunk? Todd, I weigh over 1,200 pounds. It takes a lot of beer to get me drunk. Yes. Do we empathize with him? For as flawed as he is, Bojack does want to better himself. Unsuccessfully, but he tries. He cares for the people in his life and wants the best for them, even if it means removing himself or doing something he really doesn't want to do. And we can all relate to thinking back to a better time when things just seem to be simpler. Does he suffer consequences? Bojack is often left saddened and broken as a result of his own mistakes. Bojack gets what's coming to him when he doesn't grow into a better person. At the end of season three, Bojack loses his nomination to win an Oscar. Instead of coping with it in a healthy and responsible manner, he instead goes on a 40-day drug-induced bender with his daughter figure, Sarah Lynn. And while reflecting on his life with her and deciding to be a better person, Sarah Lynn dies of a drug overdose. So it doesn't matter what we did in the past or how we'll be remembered. The only thing that matters is right now, this moment, this one spectacular moment we are sharing together. Right, Sarah Lynn? Sarah Lynn? Sarah Lynn? He damages friends, opportunities, and his own mental health because of his absolute awfulness as a human being or er, horse person. One more. Anthony Edward Stark, a.k.a. Iron Man. Tony is cocky, spontaneous, and not in a good way. A smart aleck, thinks he knows best. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. And yet, he is one of the most beloved MCU heroes. Is he entertaining? Shakespeare in the park? Doth mother know? You wear as her drapes. Oh yeah. Is he empathetic? The whole arc of the first Iron Man movie is Tony taking responsibility for his actions and trying to be a better person. I saw young Americans killed by the very weapons I created to defend them and protect them. Does he suffer consequences? Odds are, if you knew someone like Tony Stark in real life, you would most likely not enjoy hanging out with him and neither do the characters. I have to tell you, not a fan of that Tony Stark. After an ATM robbery was Moreover, his arrogance and poor behavior have been the main conflict of more than a few movies. And these are all well-liked characters, despite their flaws. They are likable instead of being frustrating and annoying to watch because their portrayals and how the world around them reacts to them makes sense. When it doesn't, the dissonance the audience feels can make a character that we're supposed to love become a character we absolutely cannot stand. Which is why so many people hate Jar Jar Binks. Missy called Jar Jar Binks. Missy, your humble servant. That won't be necessary. Oh, but it is. One of the most despised characters that we were meant to love. Jar Jar is dumb, clumsy, incompetent, doesn't understand social cues, and is all around irritating. The writers of the prequel trilogy must have looked at Yoda and went, Hey, people like this little gremlin that talks funny, so let's make another character like him. You guys like this? Is this fun? You guys like this guy? Is this Star Wars yet? My no no. Miss a day starting pity okey day with the brisky morning munching, then boom! Getting very scared and grabbing that Jedi and pow! Miss it here. But let's look at the criteria in the same way we did with the other characters. Is he entertaining? Well, this is subjective and depends on how much you're okay with poop jokes, oh. <laughs> random annoying voices and speech patterns, and slapstick humor. 
There are other characters that are written this way that work, so we'll give it a pass and say yes. Do we empathize with him? There's never really any reason given as to why Jar Jar is the way he is. He just is. Why were you banished, Jar Jar? It's a long hotel, but uh, a small part of it would be Miss, uh, uh, clumsy. We don't get any backstory on him. We never learn what drives him, which is probably for the best. So, no, we do not empathize with him. Does he suffer consequences? Not really. Aside from a few instances of annoyance, the other characters don't seem to mind him all that much. His ineptitude and irritating behavior is not meant with anything that would force him to change for the better. In fact, he's rewarded. He is given the title of General, despite having little to no leading experience as far as we know. He is in command of thousands of his own people, has gained the unconditional trust of what's basically Space SEAL Team 6, and becomes an ambassador and recognized war hero. There is a clear dissonance between the audience and how the character is treated in their world, and that is why so many people despise him. So if you ever want to make an endearing character with, let's say, less than desirable traits, think about how they would fit into that world. Because if written well, what would be an annoying, undesirable person in the real world could be an interesting character that can make us laugh, that we can relate to, and even root for, or relegate them to a caricature meant to sell merchandise and entertain little kids. Is this Star Wars yet? His overprotectiveness and thoughtlessness when it comes to Nemo is the driving force that causes him to, to be taken. Sometimes I just gotta do funny voices to get it to get it all out. You okay? I'm fine. It's just so funny. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs>